Hi everybody, I hope that you are staying healthy and still washing your hands. I just wanted to give you an update on what the youth is doing right now. So we are still meeting on Instagram Live on Sundays at five o'clock for our youth Bible study. And then last week we did a at-home scavenger hunt. It was really fun. The kids found items around their house and then sent me pictures of it. And then we had a couple winners. And then this week we'll be doing some virtual hangouts and playing some games over video chat. So the Bible study that you're about to hear is a recap of our study that we did on Sunday. Um, it is a continuation of our Doubt It series, and so here is week two of Doubt It. Hey guys, it's Emma. I am a youth member at the Umbly United Methodist Church. Jordan wanted me to read a verse from the Bible today, and really quick before I get started to that, I wanted to remind you guys, during this whole situation, we are all in this together. And yeah, I'm just going to continue. Um, so if you want to follow along, I'm reading um, John 20, 24 through 29. Now Thomas, also known as Did Didymus, one of the twelve, was not the disciples when Jesus came, so the when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the stores were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace, eh, sorry, be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thank you guys. I hope y'all um, took something from that verse and hope you guys are having a good week and see you guys hopefully soon. Bye guys. In nearly every area of our lives, investigating and fact checking is reasonable. But when it comes to our faith, asking for evidence, investigating and fact checking is sometimes looked down upon. So here's what's happening. Jesus has just been crucified and the disciples were devastated. I mean, imagine these people thought that Jesus had come to save them, but then he died. Jesus' followers were mourning, afraid, and probably a little ashamed to think that maybe they'd been wrong about everything. But then, days after his death, stories started to spread that people had seen Jesus. People were understandably pretty excited. And then Jesus shows up to see all of his disciples, all of them except Thomas. So when the other disciples tell Thomas that Jesus is back from the dead, He's skeptical. I mean, I'd probably be t skeptical too because dead people usually stay dead. This news was so unbelievable that Thomas says he'll only believe if he can not only see Jesus, but also put his fingers through the wounds in Jesus's flesh. And look at what happens. Jesus shows up. Jesus doesn't get angry with Thomas for not having enough faith. Jesus doesn't punish Thomas for not believing the news immediately. Jesus doesn't shame Thomas for his questions and our doubts. Jesus does what Thomas asks. He shows him his scars and lets Thomas touch them. I'm sure Thomas wasn't the only disciple who needed evidence to believe in Jesus, but he is the only disciple that asked for it that we know of. The book of John, which is where Emma read the story of Thomas to us, was written about 50 years after Jesus ascended to heaven. So it was written to a community of Jesus followers who had never seen Jesus in the flesh. Even those early believers needed reassurance that Jesus really did rise again. It must have been so comforting to see Thomas asking the same kinds of questions that they might have been asking 50 years later. 
Jesus' words to Thomas must have deeply resonated with them. Jesus told Thomas he got to see Jesus in the flesh, but there would be future followers of Jesus who wouldn't get that privilege. Jesus said future believers would have to base their belief on other kinds of evidence, and they'd be blessed for it. The story of Thomas demanding evidence isn't shameful. It's essential. Through Thomas's interactions with Jesus, we see that Jesus knew his future followers would need proof, evidence, and eyewitness accounts that he really did rise from the dead. The story of Thomas is only one story in scripture where a follower of God asked for evidence before believing what they'd heard about God was true. Although it might be surprising that this story is in the Bible, here's what we can learn. God doesn't shame us for our questions. Instead, God gives us the evidence that we need in order to believe. When we struggle to believe because we're not sure we have enough evidence, God doesn't shame us for our questions. Instead of punishing, silencing, or getting angry with us, God gives us the evidence we need in order to believe.